I got these little garden gnomes from Walmart. They were on clearance for $5. And as soon as I saw them, I knew that they needed a paint job. My plan is to do a Dia de los Muertos um, themed garden gnome. And I'm going to use the Jamie Ray Vintage Folklorico stencil to achieve that. This is one of my favorite stencils. I've used it quite a bit. And I'm going to do a charro suit. So if you don't know what that is, I'll put a picture of it up. The charro suit originated in Mexico and you see a lot of them in uh, festivals, baptisms, communions, obviously Dia de los Muertos and at the charriadas. My garden gnome is going to have a Dia de los Muertos inspired charro suit. I'm using the Jamie Ray Vintage stenciling brush, the number one, and the Folklorico stencil from Jamie Ray Vintage. I am unable to do the swirling technique with this stencil on the gnome because of the curve of it. So instead I'm doing the pouncing technique and it's working really, really well. You can purchase the items used to make this garden gnome on my website and I will leave links in the description box for the stenciling brush, the paint, and the stencil. Now to work on the front of the charro suit and the sleeves. A traditional charro suit would have the big bow tie on the front. And I really like this one that I had found with the colors of the Mexican flag. Um, but this, I left it out. This is a charro inspired garden gnome. And I was just worried that if it was out in the garden, that if it got watered on too much or rained on, that the um, red of the bow tie would start to bleed a lot down the, the gnome's beard. A traditional charro would also have a sombrero, but this is what the garden gnome came with. So I'm going to do the floral embroidery along the rim of his hat, which you see on the sombreros. And I'm going to try to get a marigold in there somewhere. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Urban Legends Antiques. And we have a website with items available to ship, urbanlegendsantiques.com. So some of the paint got smudged on the one side of the garden gnome's hat. So I'm going to remove it and do it over. And I'm not quite sure about the placement of the marigold on the gnome as well. So I'm going to remove this side right here and redo it. And I don't know, maybe I will take the marigold off as well. So my garden gnome, at this point I can call it done, but honestly the flower right there in the middle is bothering me. So I did end up removing it and I'm going to go with a different look instead. Cottage core is a really big look right now in home decor, but you don't see a lot of like Latin inspired cottage core. So I'm trying to do more of a, a Latin inspired cottage core. That's why I chose the gnome and that's why I'm choosing the folklorico stencil and doing a charro suit. But my plan is to kind of merge the two looks together and have a Latin inspired cottage core garden gnome. Maybe we'll do a little house for him outside, a little Pueblo, but that will be for Chuck to build. I'm happy with the way the charro suit is looking. I put the marigold on the back instead of the front and I like it better. So next we're gonna move on to the Dia de los Muertos part of this. To give my little gnome a sugar skull vibe, I am using Chalky Chicks black paint in Starless Night and I'm going to go over his nose and his little hands. While the paint dries on his nose and his hands, I'm going to do the regalia on the side of the charro suit. The traditional charro is a highly skilled horseman who does this elegant dance with the horse. They bend and twist and move in this incredibly beautiful, elegant way. I've seen them rope and it's just, it's magical. I, I don't know how to explain it if you haven't seen it, but it's, it's very, very beautiful. And I love to see the Chados do their dance. The Chado that you see me posting photos is Jerry Diaz. He is my favorite Chado. I watch him all the time. Now I am painting the little skeleton hands onto my gnome and I'm going to give him a little skeleton nose. 
The sugar skulls or calaveras are a large part of the decor of Dia de los Muertos. Where I live, Dia de los Muertos is very, very big. It's super popular and you see a lot of the festivals. It's a two-day festival where you honor your loved ones, you remember them, and it's a celebration. It's not a time to mourn and it's a beautiful way to remember your family. Chuck saw my gnome and instantly said that he needed a house in the backyard. Chuck's uncle used to raise and care for horses used by the Chados in Northern California. So he was really excited to work on this little gnome's house. We are using discarded pallet wood that we found on the side of the road. The cost of wood right now is very, very expensive, but ironically, the pallet wood you just find laying around everywhere. So that is what we are using to make our gnome's little Pueblo. Hello everyone, let's see. Welcome to my construction site. I'm gonna build a little gnome home. Let's get started on this. Here we go. So I'm gonna square off these um, pieces of recycled pallet wood. Um, some of these, these are cut at an angle, so I'm gonna cut them square. The direct translation of Pueblo is village and we are only making one little gnome home. Chuck is drilling the front of the house into a little frame that he has on the back. Um, the pallet wood is actually really, really strong wood. So that's why you can see he's really having to push into the pallet wood to get his wood screws to go through. So now Chuck is measuring on the front of the gnome house where he wants the roof to go and he's using this square and he's just drawing along the line where he wants the slope of the roof to be. So now that he's got the lines drawn onto the wood, that is where he's going to cut the wood to attach the roof for the gnome house. He's attaching a base onto the gnome home so that way it will be able to stand freely. And now my little gnome home is getting a roof. Um, I think that maybe I will call this a casita just so that Chuck can tell me it's not a casita. <laughs> While Chuck was making the little casita, he was telling me that one of his cousins is a charro who has participated in a lot of the Tournament of Roses parades. Chuck's making the front entry, like that step right there, a little bit longer so that way my gnome will fit on it. And here is the finished product. This is our little gnome home. I love it. I think it's super, super cute. Um, Chuck thinks that I need to decorate it. So I'm going to pull out some more of my stencils and see what I can do. This is the Mexican embroidery stencil from Jamie Ray Vintage. And I'm using a Jamie Ray Vintage stencil brush um, and it's one and a quarter size. And I'm obviously using my Chalky Chicks paint. I have out some Loganberry, some Acorn, which is a lovely terracotta color, and the Bees Knees. So let's see what I can do to decorate my cute little gnome house, AKA Casita. The color of the exterior of your home in California is kind of a hot button item to talk about. I've seen homes that range from white, black, blue, gray, upwards to neon pink, purple. I've seen neon green homes before. And it's not for me to say what is right or wrong when someone chooses the color that they want for the exterior of their home. But if you live in an association, a lot of the times um, certain colors are banned. Having said that, I do think that for my little gnome house, purple is perfect for the roof. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell and share this video with your family and friends. It will help our channel grow, which we are trying to do right now. Also, um, leave me a comment below. What do you think about the color choice that I put onto 
my little gnome house is it something that you would choose or would you choose more muted colors um let me know so what i'm doing is i'm kind of building out the frame of the entryway for my little gnome house instead of painting a traditional door i opted to have the door look more like a raw wood so it has a rustic look to it and i'm painting the frame around the entrance instead this is my little doorknob and um, I was thinking it would be like kind of a coppery metal color but it doesn't look like that at all so I'm going to pull out some other paint. So I decided that I would draw out a door frame just so that way there's no confusion. That's my gnome's door. So does it look like a four-year-old drew this door? Uh, maybe, but that's the beauty of being a creative. I can call this folk art. And now for the doorknob, I'm using Debbie's Design Diary, her copper patina. This stuff is super pigmented, and I'm just going to give a little uh, doorknob and some hinges to the gnome door. And there you have it, a Latin-inspired cottage core themed Dia de los Muertos gnome and house. This was a very special week for me in addition to learning some more about Charles, I actually got to learn a little bit more about Chuck's culture and heritage. I'm Jesse from Urban Legends Antiques, and this week you guys saw Chuck. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Looks like the ants like my uh, gnome home. Hmm.